everybody. Welcome to Grooves. It's so exciting to join you in your living rooms or in your dining rooms or wherever you're having groups today. Thanks for inviting me into your home in a weird way. Uh, it's so exciting to dive in to some groups content today. But first, before we go into the questions, a bit of a recap on the teaching that we did this past week. We looked at fullest love and we dove into the story of Ruth and Boaz and how Ruth was a widow, and Boaz showed her kind of a full love that we can picture, right? Boaz didn't need to do all these kind things that he helped her with as a widow, and yet Boaz loved her, and he showed that love towards her. And in a way, we can see how Jesus is also kind of the prime example of showing love, because he was a servant um, in a world where that really wasn't known. See, we took away three things, that love is not transactional, that love is a choice that you make all the time, it's a choice you make over and over again, and it's serving. Love is serving even when you're exhausted. So as you're going to be talking about in your groups, be thinking about those things and how love can work in your life in a different way than you might have experienced. I'm excited to dive into these questions with you today. Hello, children. Good to have you today. So excited to be with you. We are going to be diving into fullest love, and I'd love to ask you some questions and have you inter interact and kind of respond to these questions with your parents and the people around you. So let's dive right into the questions. A little bit of a re recap. We talked about Ruth, who's a poor woman who lost her husband. See, back in the day, the poor would need to follow the harvesters, who are people who are harvesting the grain in the field. And they would need to pick up the scraps in order to find food. Ruth finds herself in one of the fields in a wealthy man named Boaz. And this is where our story picks up. And we're going to be reading from Ruth 2, 8, verses 8 through 9. So it says this, So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. I love that story. It's so great. But here's a few questions about that. Number one. You see, we find that Boaz showed full love to Ruth. He did not have to go and give her water and show her kindness out in the field. And yet full love for someone is never an obligation or something that you have to do. Right? Full love is demonstrated by making a choice to put someone else above yourself. Even if you're not getting anything in return. So think about these questions and talk about these amongst yourselves. Who are some of the people that you love? Jesus is another great example of sacrificial love for us. He died on the cross for us, even though we didn't deserve it. How does that make you feel? How can you love others the way that Jesus loved you? There are people in our lives who are like Ruth, people who are perhaps hurting or in need. Maybe there's a kid in your class or a neighbor who's having a hard time and needs some encouragement and love. In what ways can you show those people full love? Hey kids, it's been great having you in groups. So exciting and I can't wait to see and hear how you're showing fullest love this week. Go get them. Alrighty, adults, it is time for your questions. We're going to dive right in here. So question number one, in what ways have you experienced the love of Christ that he has for you? 
How have you experienced Christ's love this week? And have you ever felt the love of Christ in a difficult times? Sometimes it's hard to feel him in those, but how have you felt him in a difficult time? Question number two. What specific ways does the enemy tell you that you might be unlovable or not good enough? Number three, we're going to start by reading from Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, and it says this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. See, in devotions last week, we talked about the meaning of the word fathom and how sailors use this word to describe the ocean and how big it is. The vastness of our ocean is just unfathomable. In a way, the love of Christ for us is also unfathomable. If you had to put into words the love of Christ that he has for your life, how would you word it? Right? And how would you tell people about the love he has for you and even them? Take turns trying it in groups or in pairs and talk about what that looks like. Hey adults, thank you so much for diving into what it means in fullest love for your life. Um, if you and your group want to dive deeper, you can turn over that page and we're going to be looking at some more questions about what fullest love can mean in a more intentional way in your life. So let's dive right into that. Hey groups, thanks for diving into some of that content today. It's been great being with you. Um, and I do want to say thank you to you guys for being so engaged in groups and in the teachings and just being invested in the foundry and what's going on here. And I really thank you for that. But I do want to put a challenge in front of you because you know there is a building that is going on on Chicago Drive. The walls are up and the panels are in. It's starting to get enclosed and it's starting to look like a building now. And we're so excited to see what God is doing next at the foundry. But we can't finish that project without the generosity of the whole church getting 100% all in for that. Um, there's still some bills that need to be paid for that because, you see, there, there's just a lot going on there. There's so many fun, exciting things happen, but it's not all paid for yet. Um, and we realize that every year we have uh, a next campaign at the Foundry where we're raising money for something in particular. And this year, it is that building. Next year, it's going to be something else, something cool and exciting. But this year, we want you to stay fully engaged in investing in that building down on Chicago Drive. So over the next week, I want you to be praying and discerning and deciding what you feel like God is calling you to do towards that next campaign. It could be financial as far as raising your weekly tithe or a one-time donation, but we are asking you to pray, discern, and decide what it looks like for you to fully invest and 100% engage into that next campaign. Because on October 13, we're going to come together as a church and make a pledge. And we want 100% all in from our whole church. And that looks like you guys. That looks like every single one of you. And again, I want to thank you for being engaged. And I want you to step up and take that next step to help this church continue to move forward with what the gospel wants to do. So thank you for being engaged and let's take that next step. So looking forward to seeing you on October 13. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.